Hi everyone, uh, welcome to fantastic PyMCQs discussion for NEET PG and FMG. So let us start with the first MCQ. The question reads like this. A patient was on anti-epileptic therapy. He presents with gum hypertrophy and bleeding. Which anti-epileptic is likely to cause this? So options are carbamazepine, ethosuximide, Phenetoin, Valproate. So you have 5 seconds of time to answer this. Yes, if your answer is C, Phenetoin, then you are right. So please understand the catch point here is gum, hypertrophy or hyperplasia. Three major drugs which do this are an anti-epileptic called Phenetoin. Then calcium channel blockers which are used in hypertension and one more drug is called cyclosporin which is a immunosuppressant. So these three drugs are commonly tested for gum hyperplasia. Since they have given anti-epileptic therapy so the answer will be phenytoin. But let us understand what are the adverse effect of the drugs given in the option. Now, ethosuximide doesn't have major adverse effect except sedation. But the other three drugs very very important. So let me first take up phenytoin. Phenytoin is also called as identoin derivative. It has most of the adverse effects starting with H. H, H. It can cause hypo. There are four hypo you need to remember. It decreases calcium, hypocalcemia. It decreases vitamin D. Three vitamins are down. So what happens if vitamin D is down? It will lead to osteomalacia. Osteomalacia. It decreases vitamin K. So there is risk of bleeding. And also it decreases folic acid. And decrease in folic acid can lead to megaloblastic, megaloblastic anemia. Right, so this is the hypo with phenytoin. Coming to the hyper aspect of phenytoin, it increases glucose hyperglycemia. It can cause hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity. And uh, it can cause high growth of hair that is in female, that is called hirsutism. And the question is, is it safe in pregnant women? No. It can cause fetal hydrantine syndrome. So the drug is teratogenic in nature. So avoid in pregnant women. So remember phenytoin for all this H. Hyperglycemia, hypersensitivity, hirsutism. Hypo I have mentioned here. That is why in the question you can see the drug causes gum hypertrophy and bleeding because of decrease in vitamin K. So we understood the adverse effect, major adverse effect of phenytoin. So what about the valproate? Valproate adverse effect can be remembered by the name itself. I am not going to write in detail. I am going to just explain. V for the nausea vomiting diarrhea. A the drug cause alopecia loss of hair. L the drug cause liver toxicity. P it can cause pancreatitis and PCOD. R rash. O Obesity that is weight gain. A. The drug will increase the ammonia. Ammonia is increased. So what I want you to answer is. If valproate increase ammonia. What is the treatment or antidote for this? So please give this comment at the comment section. Answer it. And T. The drug is teratogenic. So leading to neural tube defects. And also it can cause thrombocytopenia and most of the antiepileptics are enzyme inducers but this is the enzyme inhibitor drug so these are the important points about valproate and i have asked valproate induced hyperammonia what is the antidote so please answer that now moving on to another important drug in epilepsy the drug name is carbamazepine Carbamazepine adverse effect can be remembered by the mnemonic HAT. 
what is hat it can cause hyponatremia so hyponatremia is called dilution hyponatremia and it can cause hepatotoxicity yeah the drug can cause allergy which can lead to a severe form of steven johnson syndrome it can cause ataxia then t the drug is teratogenic and it can also decrease platelet that is called thrombocytopenia so there was a question in one of the neat pg the derivative of this is oxcarbazepine now what is the difference between these two oxcarbazepine has all these adverse effect less less adverse effect compared to carbamazepine all these are less except one the one which is more with oxcarbazepine is hyponatremia so dilution hyponatremia is more with oxcarbazepine compared to carbamazepine so this is also been tested so what we did we understand from this question is the most important adverse effect of anti epileptic drugs let us move on to the next question the next mcq will be like this which of the following anti tubercular drug resistance is due to cat g gene mutation so you have the hrzd option so try to answer this within 5 seconds yes it's a easier one so it is due to isoniazid now what we need to understand here is how the inh or isoniazid works inh will enter the bacteria so this is inside the bacteria once it enters the bacteria it becomes active to make this active we require an enzyme called catalase peroxidase this is the enzyme now who will code for this the gene is called cat g gene this is the gene which codes and this is in the bacteria now this active will react with nad and inhibits two important gene inha and casa gene now these genes are responsible for making mycolic acid mycolic acid and this is required for cell wall synthesis so what happens when we give isoniazid isoniazid will become active and this will form a adduct with nad and inhibits this genes so mycolic acid is not synthesized so cell wall is not synthesized now please remember bacteria wants to survive and it become resistance how the gene cat g gene become mutated so mutation of cat g gene will occur so inh will not become active if it doesn't become active then it cannot inhibit mycolic acid synthesis so it will not inhibit cell wall synthesis now going back we understood the isoniazid mechanism of resistance what about rifampicin rifampicin inhibit dna dependent rna polymerase now this is coded by the gene called rpob gene so this is the mutation where you see resistant to rifampicin pyrazinamide also <coughs> becomes active into pyrazonic acid and the enzyme is called pyrazinamidase now the gene <coughs> the gene which codes for this is called pnca gene and this mutation will lead to resistance ethambutol is also important for making arabinogalactan so the gene involved is mb bar a gene so what did we understand from this the gene mutations of the tb drugs very very important so let me repeat again isoniazid it is cat g gene mainly but sometimes there is minor mutation of inha and casa that is also going to confirm resistance but it's minor rifampicin rpo b gene pyrazinamide pnc a gene ethamutol mb b r a gene so this is the answer now moving on to the next question mcq which of the following anti tubercular drug causes ear defects problem ear problems so we all know the amikacin which belongs to aminoglycosides any aminoglycosides they are known to produce 
ototoxicity so they can cause vestibular toxicity and auditory toxicity they are also going to cause neurotoxicity that means they cause neuromuscular blockade neurotoxicity mainly they cause neuromuscular blockade and they are also toxic to the kidney nephrotoxic so whenever we think of aminoglycide think they are ototoxic neuromuscular blockade and nephrotoxic now bedaquilin is a recently approved drug not recently 10 to 12 years back it inhibits mycobacterial atp synthesis two important adverse effects are it is a toxic drug to liver hepatotoxic and it can cause qt prolongation now isoniazid simple to remember it causes the n for peripheral neuropathy and managed with pyridoxin h it is going to cause hepatotoxicity pyrazinamide starts with p remember it can cause pain what pain joint pain why because it increases uric acid so we understood the major adverse effect of isoniazid pyrazinamide what about uh, two more drugs which are first line drugs let me tell you rifampicin starts with r so remember red color so it will cause orange red discoloration of secretions it can be urine it can be any secretions in the body then it will be causing hepatotoxicity the last drug in first line tb drugs are ethambutol ethambutol remember for eye in the eye it causes retrobulbar optic neuritis so patient will not come and tell us he has optic neuritis patient will complain of decrease in visual acuity particularly will also complain of red green blindness red green blindness so what did we study from this mcq what are the major adverse effect of anti-tubercular drug particularly the hrz drugs so what i want you to tell in the comment section is what is the adverse effect of para amino salicylate which is used in which is used in tuberculosis and also tell me what is the adverse effect of cyclosyrin used in tuberculosis yes and also comment the adverse effect of a drug ethionamide which is also used in tuberculosis so waiting for your answers let us move on to the next mcq a repeatedly asked question mechanism of action of botulinum toxin is blocks postsynaptic receptor of acetylcholine blocks acetylcholine esterase inhibit reuptake of acetylcholine block presynaptic acetylcholine release so please try to answer this yes if you are telling option d then you are right so botulinum toxin also called as botox which is known to decrease presynaptic acetylcholine release now the use of botox is in cosmetics to treat wrinkles and also it is used in muscle spasm like a chalice cardia the derivative of botulinum toxin is onobotulinum toxin a so onobotulinum toxin a that is approved for overactive bladder as well as migraine prophylaxis migraine prophylaxis the mechanism is frequently tested now what we should understand from this mcq the drugs acting at neuromuscular junction now the one which inhibit the acetylcholine release is we know that botulinum toxin botox here then the vesicular transporter which will transport acetylcholine to vesicle can be blocked by the name side of vesicle vesamico so this is the one now the choline uptake is inhibited by you know the name starts with choline hemicholine hemicholinium and can we inhibit choline stress yes we have the drugs and they are called as anti choline stress can you tell me some anti choline stress drugs so that is for you to answer in the comment section tell me some anti choline stress drugs now we can also block this nm receptor and the nm receptor can be blocked by neuromuscular i mean skeletal muscle relaxant d tuberculin or anything ending with curium or anything ending with curonium they can block nm receptor now is there any neuromuscular 
I mean musculoskeletal muscle relaxation which stimulate NM and that is called succinylcholine. These are all skeletal muscle relaxant. Now there is a drug which inhibits rhinodine receptor 1 which is used as drug of choice for neurolept malignant syndrome and malignant hyperthermia. And now what is the drug name? You have to tell me in the comment section. Okay. Yes. So here we understood what are the drugs which affect the neuromuscular junction. So let me repeat again. The acetylcholine release is blocked by Botox, vesicle transport by vesemicol, choline uptake by hemicholinium, choline esterase by anticholine esterase, and NM is blocked by skeletal muscle relaxants, stimulated by succinylcholine. They are also skeletal muscle relaxant. Tell me what inhibits inodine receptor 1. The last question will be this which of the following is not correct dose in the treatment of multi leprosy in adult patient so read the options clofazamine 300 monthly 50 milligram daily 100 milligram daily 450 milligram monthly rifampicin you have five seconds of time to answer this now before we answer let us understand the treatment for posibacillary and multi now for posibacillary, we use rifampicin 600 mg and half of that clofazamine is 300 mg and these are given every month monthly and it is given supervised now dapsone is given as 100 mg half of 100 is clofazamine 50 mg these are given daily to the patient and the total duration for possibacillary is 6 months. We all know it. But what about multibacillary? Multibacillary same regimen is continued. But the only thing that changes is the duration of treatment which is 12 months. So that is how we manage multibacillary. So coming back, what is the wrong option? Clofazamine 300 monthly, yes correct. Clofazamine 50 mg daily, correct. Dapsone 100 mg daily. Rifampicin is 600 mg monthly, so they have given 450 mg, so that is the wrong option here. Now, the last thing what I want to want you people to answer is, you have seen lepra reaction. Now tell me, if a patient develops type 2 lepra reaction, what is the drug of choice? And tell me whether we should stop the treatment for leprosy at that time. So please answer these things. So with that, we'll wind up 5 MCQs, fantastic 5. And uh, you may ask your doubts in the Telegram group, which is mentioned here. You can follow me on Instagram here. And uh, if you want to write a mail, we have the mail ID, Dr. Bharat's Pharmacology. Pharmacology at gmail.com. And... Uh, if you like this content or this discussion, you may like the video, subscribe and share to your friends. So any other improvement you want, any other thing to be included, please comment here. Thank you all. Happy learning.